since you got the idea you was a champion poker player in Montana. Well, I still think I'm pretty good. Where's this cousin of yours at? Wyoming? Where do you figure Wyoming's at? Right over yonder behind that hill. Unless somebody's moved it. This ain't the 4th of July, is it? Don't know. Besides your favor. Besides it's winning. Well, come on. What are we waiting for? Oh, Fred, you take Jackson first and Slim and get behind those rocks and wait for him. Come on, boys, follow me.
from Montana. This is no time to think. When it comes to choosing sides, Dinky, you're not so good. You choose a partner, didn't I? What I said still goes. Well, how did I know there was cattle rustlers? They seem like nice, friendly boys, such as might give us our supper. You'd had your supper in jail if I hadn't been there to get you out of that scrape. You didn't get me out of nothing. We was both running equal. Anyway, it got us someplace. Here we are in Wyoming, safe and sound and free as the birds. Put up your hand. Free as what kind of birds? Jail birds. Keep them up. Hi. We heard you the first time. I thought that voice sounded kind of familiar. I'm sure glad to see you, Tom. What are you up to? Can't you keep out of trouble? You don't seem very glad to see me. I never expected to see one of my kin throw in with a bunch of cattle thieves. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Well, you're all wrong if you're alluding to me. We were just coming over the hill and we heard a lot of shooting. Well, we just happened to choose the wrong side. Uh, tell them who I am, dear. Well, there I go again, always forgetting my manners. Tom, I want you to meet my friend, Dink Hooley. Dink, this is my cousin, Tom Fillmore. Uh, glad, to do, glad to know you, cousin Tom. Well, you ought to be. He's a big man around here. Head of the Cattlemen's Association, runs the bank. In fact, he's half of Wyoming. The shining example that my dad always held up to me. Famous folk, huh? Your father wrote me you were coming, but I didn't expect to meet you this way. Quit kidding, Tom. It never worried you how or where we'd meet. Well, can't you two patch up things for one evening so we can get over to Cousin Tom's for a meal? I think we'd better get something in town. But we'll see you tomorrow. That is, if you'll let us in your bank. I'll be glad to see you. I got a sneaking hunch that Cousin Tom didn't mean that last remark. Teach that fellow not to pull any aces out of his sleeve. Oh, why don't you quit playing cards? You always lose your shirt or get one torn off your back. I whipped him, didn't I? Ah, that's what you think. The good thing I stepped in when I did, or you might have got yourself a black eye. Yeah? I'm beginning to think Wyoming isn't such a friendly place. Let's drop in on that cousin of yours and then ramble on to Idaho. Now you're talking, Dinky. <laughs> Tell you, Sheriff. We're not dealing with any ordinary cattle rustlers. This is the third time within the month they've given you the slip. Yes, I... Well, why don't you do something about well, it? Well, I was just... Pardon me, there's two men outside. 
Who are they? Well, one of them claims to be a lightning rod salesman, and the other one claims to be a relative. All right. Send them in. Jared, you better warn all the ranchers to double their night guards. You're right, Tom. I'll do that right away. What have you done now? Well, that's a fair question, Tom. You know, Dink here is a lightning rod salesman, and he got a down payment on one. Well, you know, I'm sort of good at draw poker, but we tried to stretch one just a little too far. I had the same idea until I was cured. Dad, yeah, the only money really worth having is the money you earn. Your father wanted me to make a cattleman of you. That is, an honest one. I'm already a cattleman, and whether you believe it or not, an honest one. The only way I'm going to keep you out of trouble is to put you to work. Well, I tried that once, too. But it turned out pretty dull. Well, you'll work or... Or else? Well, that's just what we aim to do. But, uh, traveling costs money. Yes, I know. You mean you want us to stick around here and sell lightning rods? Or play draw poker? Where are you fellas going? Idaho. Dear, I don't quite understand you. Why don't you get married and settle down? Well, you're running around like a maverick without a brand on. Well, I don't like brandy. It hurts in the wrong place. Well, I've done my best. You know, it's pretty tough trying to sell lightning rods around here. There you are. Give that to the cashier. A hundred dollars. Wyoming's a better place than I thought it was. Thank you, Tom. Goodbye. Thanks for me, too, Cousin Tom. Hello, Judy. Hello, Tom. I'd like to have you over for supper tonight if you don't work too late. That's mighty nice of you, and I'll certainly be there. Supper will be ready about seven. That's fine for me. Uh, Mrs. Brown told me that you had some trouble with those rustlers yesterday, trying to get at your cattle again. We did, but they didn't get away with any. We've got... Oh, I'm sorry. Miss Westall wants to meet Dare Rudd, a relative of mine. From Montana. Well, you've had an accident, haven't you? Oh, it's all my fault, lady. You see, I'm a lightning rod salesman, and I was showing your customer how hard lightning can really hit, and his eye kind of got in the way of it. Of course, there's no beauty spot, but it's a darn good argument for buying lightning rods. Now, maybe your folks could use a couple. Oh, thanks. We don't need any. Well, hadn't you better get that eye attended to right away? Is it getting worse? Why don't you go over to see Dr. Dodd? Oh, we dropped into his place, but uh, it seems he's out of town. Miss Judith, what would you suggest? A cold compress. The colder, the better. And I suppose you have some over at your place. It hurts pretty bad. <laughs> All right. Perhaps you'd better attend to it. Goodbye, Tom. See you tonight. Oh, uh, excuse me a moment. I've decided to take your good advice, Tom. And also that job you offered me. Hey, maybe you could use a couple of lightning rods. The lightning has already struck. So you're going to marry Tom. I never said that. But you've been thinking about it, haven't you? Not exactly. Well, he's been thinking about it, hasn't he? Maybe you'd better ask him. I'm afraid people around here spend too much time thinking. I'm beginning to see why you go around the country getting black eyes. You know, Tom says I ought to settle down. Maybe pick me out a nice girl and get married. And since you're not already spoken for, I guess I'll just marry you. There. You tell your cousin Tom I think you'll live. That'll probably be the worst news he has all day. Mighty nice of you to fix me up so pretty, Miss Judy. I'm much obliged to you. You're welcome. Goodbye, Mr. Rudd. Say, I proposed to you a little while ago. What do you think about it? I'd rather not tell you. You've been hurt enough for one day. I want you to do me a favor. Meaning what? Hit me in the eye. Hit me in both eyes.
Hammond, boys. Good morning, Hammond. Morning. So you missed out again. Well, running cattle off right under Tom Fillmore's nose sounds awful easy in here. It don't work that way on the range. Lost your nerve? No. My common sense, neither. We were doing all right with the little fellows. Why do we have to pick on the biggest man in the county? Because he's got the only fat beef that's ready for the market. And I've got it sold for cash. Get that? All right, Bart. But so far, all we've got out of Tom Fillmore is plenty of lead and hard riding. Well, we lost a couple of men yesterday. Killed? No, just shot up a little. They won't be no help for some time. There's a couple of fellas that wrecked my place this morning. I'm going over and throw them out again. Don't be in a hurry, Bart. They look like friends of mine. They were pretty smart about it, too. They hadn't hightailed it off to one side and took Fillmore after him. We had more trouble than we did. Where'd they come from? The little fella said something about Montana. Might be a couple of cattle detectives. No, you're right too good for that. Let me get your other eye ready. Here comes that man again. Hello, boys. I'm sorry about that little excitement here this morning. Yes, so are we. Well, if I'd have known you took your furniture so serious, I guess we wouldn't have started busting it up. Well, I like fellas with nerve. You two seem to have plenty of it. Strangers around here? How'd you guess it? Know anything about cattle? That's our line. If you want to go to work, I can place you with the right people. Of course, it takes plenty of nerve, but the money comes rolling in. That sounds interesting. You see, I told you we ought to look to run before we took that other job. Well, if that job don't pan out, well, look me up. Thanks, we will. Come on, Vicky. That's what I call a gentleman and a gambler from the old school. I guess it's his own business where he gets his cattle. I'm not worrying about it. Oh, we're sitting down to get two jobs offered in one day. What do you say we celebrate? What are those? If they aren't biscuits, I'll eat the chuck wagon. So this is the cattle business. Dear, why don't you quit this squall work and come on to Idaho with me like we intended? No. Well, I promised Tom I'd settle down and be a cattleman. And if this is his prescription, why... Don't only worry about your career is whether you'll take that girl away from him. That's why he's rubbing it into you, making you look like a monkey in front of her. Lying that triangle and call the boys in. And there's no use trying to cover it up because I know where you've been going nearly every night. You've been keeping company with Miss Judy. Lying that iron like I told you. What makes you think that? Because there ain't no cowboy washes his neck three times a week unless there's a woman at the bottom of it. Come and get it! Come and get it! Hello, boss. Hello. Hope you're hungry. I've been hungry ever since you started cooking for this outfit. This time you're just going to swallow up with food, Mr. Hardy. I've done that yesterday. <laughs> Too bad to waste such good food on just ordinary cow hands. Why, this kind of food is fitting for human beings. I ain't human, and that ain't fitting. Sink your teeth into those biscuits, boys. Last time I did, two of them stayed there. Hello, Lynn. Howdy, Tom. What have you got there? 
Well, it looks like an apron from here, but somewhere inside it's your cousin. <laughs> Come on, you old sidewinder. Don't you know August is a month for shedding your skin? <laughs> How are you getting on? Well, we'll be ready for the trail in a couple of days. Good. What do they run? About 500 ahead of fat three-year-olds. I don't suppose you want anything second grade. Right. Hello, Miss Judy. Won't you step down and eat? No, thanks. I had a late breakfast. I'm beginning to think you haven't any confidence in my cookie. I think it's safer just to have faith in you. I thought women were always ready to die for a cause. That is, a cause that they have faith in. Oh, but not for a biscuit. <laughs> I finally found a way to put my arm around you without getting my face slapped. Uh, well, what happened to Tom? Oh, he stopped back there to look the country over. <laughs> Are you all right, Judith? I never felt better in my life. Thanks for taking care of it, dear. Don't mention it, Tom. It's quite a relief from cooking. I'll go get your horse, Miss Judith. When does that herd hit the trail, then? Day after tomorrow. Well, I'm still against trying to steal Tom Fillmore's cattle. Don't think it's so healthy. It won't be stealing. Our friend Lynn here is going to give them to you. And what will Fillmore's cowboys be doing? Taking their orders from me. You don't want a better setup than that, do you? I'm still against it. Well, I don't think it's asking too much, Tom. All I want you to do is to take that silly apron off there. Well, why waste a valuable man that way? Why humiliate him? He's learning the business from every angle. Oh, I know all the stories about Dare. Yeah, maybe he was wild, but he's settled down now. I'll give him a chance, Tom. If I could be sure Dare had changed his ways, oh, I... Oh, but he has. You seem to know him pretty well on short acquaintance. You think a good deal of him, don't you? You know, I think a lot of you, too. Hello, Judy. Tom, did you lock up the ranch for the night? We wound up the cat and kicked the clock out. Thought I'd ride in and pick up a clean apron. We uh, cooks have our problems, too, just like ranch owners. You're not cooking anymore. You mean I'm fired? No, promoted. I'm putting you in charge of taking the cattle to the railroad, selling them, and bringing back the money. Well, I guess that's the best news you've heard in a long time. It's great. You're going along? No. You're on your own. Every head of cattle and every dollar you get for them, it's up to you. Good night. Night, Tom. Well, there you are. Wasn't that fine of Tom to think of it? It sure was. By the way, I haven't asked you to marry me since yesterday. <laughs> no. Saved your life, didn't I? Why, I could have stopped that horse any time I'd wanted to. With this little hand? Morning, Tom. One of the boys said you wanted to see me. About that trail herd. I'm turning it over to Dare. You mean you want me to take orders from him? That's the size of it. But I want you to go along just like one of the boys. Well, you're the boss. 
But I'd say you were crazy if I didn't know better. Maybe I am. Of course, Dad's your own kin. But you know his reputation. Yeah. And you're still going to turn him loose on the open range with all that beef? See that he has enough men and gets off to a good start. Yes, sir. Mighty fine cattle, boss. Almost as good as we raised in Montana. Too bad you had to leave there. They are in fine shape there. You should be able to drive them in without losing a pound. You haven't anything to worry about. We're not taking them very far. How soon do you expect to be back? Five days from now. Just in time for supper. Supper will be waiting, too. So long, dear. Good luck. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Judith. Goodbye, Miss Judith. Goodbye, uh, Cousin Tom. You ain't got a thing to worry about. <laughs> Say, hey, Dad, what do you think all this sirloin and pot roast is worth? The boys say it ought to bring around ten thousand dollars. That's right. Cash money? That's right. I guess I was only fooling when I told Cousin Tom he didn't have nothing to worry about. Maybe you thought you were, but you weren't. You mean he ain't got nothing to worry about? Not a thing. <laughs> Hello, boys. Good looking stock. Ah, uh, now, no fair to mind them steers. We saw them first. I was hoping to see you in town before you got underway, but you made yourself sort of scarce. Oh, sorry. We missed you, Hammond. Is there anything special you wanted? No, just to shake hands and wish you luck on your new job. I always like to see a young fella get along. Thanks. There's plenty of opportunities in the cattle business. Never so much as right now. That is, if a young fella's smart enough to see him. Well, I guess that lets me out. I can't see any further than the end of my nose. Well, if you ever decide to take an interest in the money end of the cattle business, I'm going over to the railroad for a couple of days. You can get in touch with me there. I'm afraid we won't have time to look you up. After we deliver these cattle, I'm heading straight back. <laughs> you talk like a fellow made up his mind. Good luck. Hey, mister, you could use a couple of lightning rods, could you? What would I do with a lightning rod? Might do you a lot of good if lightning should strike you. So long. How'd you make out? It's a fine-looking herd of cattle. Bring a lot of money. I don't mean that. Well, our young friend won't talk business. Looks like you'll have to take him over. I've got an idea how you can do it. What are you planning on bedding down tonight? I'm checking that to you, Lynn. You know this country better than I do. Well, I just thought I'd mention it to you. You're running this outfit. I'm glad you keep remembering that. Willow Springs is up ahead. Good water and grass. Willow Springs? Isn't that where they had the big Indian massacre? We've run out Indians around here. Well, that's good, isn't it? Hey, Jack, there's a cowboy up there. He's got a new car trick. He can tell which one you're thinking of. Well, that's something every cattleman should know. Here's another one, Lynn. Got him. What car do you have? I've always been partial to the Ace of Clubs. I'll take the one-eyed king. Always trying to make it tough. If I knew as much about cards as you do, I think I'd make my living at it. Now, him and I have been arguing that point for a long time. The best poker player west of the Mississippi. It's covering a lot of territory, mister. Yep. Well, we better turn in, boys. We gotta get started early in the morning. I think I'll take a look around to see that the herd's not drifting out of here. This herd ain't drifting away from grass and water unless somebody prods them out. He ought to know that. Uh, 
Fellas, come in. You boys been with Tom Fillmore for a long time. And there's a little matter I'd like to ask your advice on. Where's the outfit? Willow Springs. And all bedded down, just like I promised. Good. Well, it's your job from now on. I'm staying out of this till after the shooting's over. I expected that. You and Hammond have a habit of staying out of things until after the shooting's over. How many night guards is he using? Only two, and they're pretty far out. You'll find the rest of them asleep in camp. All right, mister. That lets you out. Come on, boys. Get your horses. We're moving in. Blankets I ever slept in. Get out of here. We got better cattle thieves than that in Montana. But don't start raining. I'm mighty near losing those cattle last night. Yeah, I started back fast when I heard the shooting. If this darn horse of mine hadn't stepped in the go for a hole, I'd have been back in time to give you fellas a hand. Well, you ought to do your cattle driving in a buggy. <laughs> well, I sure feel mighty sorry. Don't let it bother you, Lynn. Just as well been ours if you and Talon knew anything. Trouble is, this boy dead turned out to be a lot smarter than we thought. Biggest town I was ever in. Don't suppose you can be St. Louis, do you? You better take a quick look now, because we're going to deliver these cattle and get out of here. Didn't he say he was the best poker player west of the Mississippi? He says he is. How long is he going to stay in town? I figure just about as long as you can keep him here. There you are, sir. $10,840. Thanks. Here's your bill of sale. People pay a lot of money for their beef steaks nowadays, don't they, mister? A lot of money's right. You made me pay top of the market for that herd. Just to prove there's no hard feelings, I'll show you the town. Thanks, but I've made up my mind to start right back. Nonsense. We don't allow visitors to leave without at least a taste of our hospitality. You're right about that, mister. I'm on your side. Well, just a taste won't take long. <laughs> well, let's go. Oh, wait a minute. I got a lot of back wages on deposit in the bank just like that. What do you expect, a miracle? That ain't a miracle. That's just my accumulated interest. <laughs> She's right here. Thank you.
Howdy, Dad. The boys want to know about drawing some money. I figured to start back pretty soon. I don't see how you're going to get the boys out of town without letting them play a little. They've always done that before when I handled them. There's not a chance of talking about their fun. They've had a hard ride and they've got their wages coming to them. And their throats are full of dust. Of course, Dad, you can go on ahead and I'll take them later. I brought them here. I guess I'll take them back. You boys get caught up on your celebrating as soon as you can. Pick it up before it gets cold. See you in the morning, boss. Looks like we're stuck here till tomorrow. What do we do? Have a meal with our friend and then run up a hotel and get some sleep. You don't mean you're celebrating a trail drive by calling into a bed with sheets and pillows and things? That's right. A bed. Well, I'd skin myself and hang my own hide up to drive before I'd be guilty of such nonsense. You're playing with a short deck, mister. And if you don't mind my saying so, this jack goes on that queen over there. You're the first fellow ever tried to tell me how to play cards. Well, no offense intended. Anybody can make a mistake. When it comes to cards, I never make mistakes. Now, wait a minute. It's none of my business, but you did make a mistake. Hello, Dad. Going to play some cards? No, just looking on. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I was just going to warn you that Brady here is the best poker player west of the Mississippi. You may be right, Hammond, but there's a lot of poker players west of the Mississippi. Are you sure you're the best? Maybe you'd like to find out. No, no, we ain't got no curiosity at all. We aim to go to the hotel and sleep in some sheets and pillows and things. I thought so. But sometime when you've caught up on your sleep, I'll take you on. You better go, Dad. Poker playing's Brady's business. Give me back that money I paid you. What are you going to do with it? I'm putting it with what I got coming to me and setting in here. Oh, do you? Goodbye, baby. I sure had made plans for you. Suppose you and me settle this west of the Mississippi business right now. When you have, start a draw. Make a draw. I guess we'll need a couple more fellas. Any fellas feel like joining us? I'll take a hand. We're both from the same town, so I guess we'd better stick together. Deal? Go ahead. You'll be paying for it. Mind if I play, boys? Come on. Hammond in town? Yeah, he's been expecting you since yesterday. He's in there playing poker with Dad. Oh, the long way around. Why don't he just take it away from there and get it over with? You've tried it a couple of times. I should think he'd get tired of it. Besides, the whole film around is still in town. Hammond says for you and the boys to keep out of sight till he needs you. Looks like you champions are having an off day. We'll catch up with your beginner's luck. I always said give me the luck. You can have the experience. One of those drinks we ordered. Coming. I'm afraid that won't do you any good, mister. I'm going to let the boys are moving out. I'll let the boys have their fun. Dave says for you boys to have a good time while you can. Looks like he's going to be right busy from now on. All open. Call and raise. Arch, I'll play these. Who the takes one? Thank <laughs> you. 
I'll just call. Four Queens. Four Aces beat Four Queens in Wyoming. had an accident. Maybe he's hurt. No, Judith. Well, what could have happened to him? Nothing. There always was a wild, crazy fellow. He'll never change. I knew he wouldn't, but you had to find it out for yourself. It's been worth everything it cost me. You mean that, that they're stolen your money? That's only what I expected. You knew it, and yet you spent him? The time had to come, and we'd had to find out. He means more than anything or anybody on this earth. Well, uh, I guess if you like someone that much, why, nothing else makes sense. I'm sorry it turned out like this. Bring him back, Tom. You're smart about these things. Smarter than any man I know. Please, Tom. I understand. He's gone hog wild. There's no use waiting around here any longer. No more's going to be sore as it is. Let's get started back this morning. Come on. We're quit if you say so. No. Nope. Come on, Darren, quit while you still got some left. No. Howdy. Hello, John. Glad to see you here, Tom. I've been worried about that new foreman of yours. What's the matter with him? Brady's got him in a poker game, and, well, uh, I'm afraid he's using your money. Thanks. Good morning, gentlemen. Get up. Let me finish this, Tom. Get up. All right. Deal me in. Last man in deals. All right, gentlemen.
horses are ready. We'd better get out of here. We're not getting out of here. We better round up the boys. It's too late. They started for a home over an hour ago with Lynn Hardy. Where are those drinks we ordered? Come been cold decking him. Throw your money in the center of that table. This game is going to end right where it started. Pick it up, dear. It's yours. I didn't think you had nerve enough to try that on me, Brady. Take it easy, Tom. You'll only get in the way. You got the money on you. That's all you wanted. Now make a break for it. Get going. I just made up my mind to one thing, Tom. I'm not the best poker player west of the Mississippi. You are. Gunfighting, come on. Hey, wait a minute. I'm running this outfit and we're heading home. Come on.
Well, I'll take the right side this time. I thought Dad was coming over to talk with you this morning. He's on his way to Montana. I was going to make him my party. He'll probably take the North Fork out of town. We sure are saps for leaving, but I suppose Tom will make her happy. There, you don't know any more about women than you do poker. It's a long ways to Montana. Yep. And traveling costs money, which we ain't got. Yep. And besides, I've gotten back into the habit of eating regular. You go on ahead. I got business attendant. Hi, Lee Springer. How do you sell? Pretty bad weather we have around here. Yeah? Dangerous, too. You know, lightning strikes alike upon the just and the unjust. At least that's what the good book says. So, brother, you can't afford to be without the protection of lightning rods. You're absolutely right. Now, you slip me $10 as a down payment, and I'll send you an A number one set of lightning rods. But I don't want any. You don't want any? Why not? Because I'm the agent for a lightning rod company. Waiting back there to see you, Dad. He's got a job for you. Cooking? No. He wants you for his partner. Are you? Say, it looks like you two will need a lightning rod. 